Hello, and welcome to another episode of the SIRS Group Podcast. I am Barbara. And I'm JC. And today, um, <clears throat> we, <laughs> JC made this discovery. We realized that we have never done a What is SIRS basic SIRS 101 episode. How, guys, how did we miss that? How did that happen? Why haven't you yelled at us? <laughs> Yeah, why is no one like, guys, what is SIRS? I'm confused. Um, I mean, I think we explained little bits and pieces here and there, sure, during our previous episodes. But what, how did, anyway, we're obviously fixing that today. We're making an episode for the beginner. Hopefully this is something you can share with people who want to learn more about your illness. Or if you are here curious about SIRS, you have no idea where to start, you don't know maybe if you have it, I hope that this episode helps you determine that a little bit better for yourself so you can make the next steps. Um, before we dive right on in, um, and it's we got presentation too, by the way, guys, so if you are listening to this, this might be one that will be worth going over to YouTube so that you can watch it, but uh, we will try to make it audibly satisfying as well. I couldn't have said that in a weirder for the, way. For the satisfaction of your ear canals <laughs> today. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for doubling down on what I just did. <laughs> um, before we get started, of course, uh, we are not medical information. <laughs> we are not medical practitioners. We are patients just like you. JC is a proficiency partner, though, with the Shoemaker Protocol, which is exciting. Um, but do not take any of this as medical advice. This is informational only for you to then take to your doctor, hopefully, or uh, preferably your SIRS literate doctor to decide on your personal treatment. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. What the heckin' is SIRS? All right. So starting from the very top, what is SIRS? So SIRS stands for Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. And you might hear this referred to as mold or biotoxin illness as well. Um, some people don't aren't familiar with SIRS specifically, but they might be familiar with mold or biotoxin illness. So just some more words you can use if you're trying to explain to someone what's going on with you. So who might have SIRS? So SIRS happens when someone's genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin encounters that biotoxin. So when you're, you're thinking about this, you can think of this as people who have SIRS potential genes and have been exposed to the biotoxin are the group of people that are experiencing SIRS. And you can think of genes as the loaded gun and biotoxins as the trigger. It kind of makes it sound more badass too. Pew pew. <laughs> So then the question is like, what are biotoxins? Like, what are these biotoxins I could be exposed to that might trigger my SIRS? And there are a lot of different biotoxins. And a biotoxin strictly is the toxins that are produced by organic materials. So there are a lot of different ones. Um, I would say the most common or frequently referred to one is mold or mycotoxins. But there are a lot of other ones, uh, Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses, parasites, uh, the bioluminescent algae, bacteria, also spike protein. I'm sure there's others I'm missing, Barbara. Yeah, red tide is what uh, some may experience. I know I I think that happens in Florida because everything happens in Florida. Um, <laughs> but uh, also, also, I think we're allowed to say this these days, but some vaccinations can also cause the problem. And I hope that's not a controversial thing to say. Sometimes, you know, with some people, their genetics are such that they uh, have a bad reaction to it. I think we can all agree that that does happen sometimes. And uh, our question is, maybe those people have genes that would predispose them to SIRS. Yeah, so the, the, it, very technically, there are two haplotypes that have been identified as the the haplotypes are the genes that show you have this predisposition for SIRS. And there's two of them that have been identified. One is the Lyme vaccine and the other one is the Gardasil HPV vaccine. Those are two specific haplotypes that can give you the predisposition for SIRS. So it's not just us speculating, it's actually 
shown in the literature that at least two vaccines can cause that. And we know that, you know, there are more vaccines that have been created since they found those haplotypes. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we found more genes are also related to other vaccines that might cause that predisposition towards SARS. Right. And the idea here is that the biotoxin is entering your system in some way, whether you're breathing it in, it was injected, or any of the, or eating it, um, in the case of hysteria. Yeah, so it like, can be ingested or even skin exposure in the case of hysteria. Right. Okay, yes. So in the sense of all of these things happening to your body, the uh, the problem is they get in there, and then your body, because of your genes cannot identify that as a biotoxin. It knows something is wrong, but it can't actually find it and then create antibodies for it. And JC's about to explain this right now much better than I am, but that is that is the issue. Uh, they're floating around in your body causing all kinds of issues and your body cannot identify it and take it down on its own. And that is what, that's how SIRS, uh, that's what, that is the manifestation of SIRS versus someone who does not have SIRS, their body can identify those biotoxins, no problem, take them down, eliminate them, and they're fine. You just said that so succinctly, and now I'm going to over-elaborate. I think that that's what people are here for, though. They either okay. love your over-elaboration, or they love me being succinct, and we give them both. <laughs> so... To so Barbara's point, why can't the toxin be eliminated? Well, you can think of your genes as this inherited instruction manual. Inherited meaning you got it from your parents. And it's the training manual for your body. It tells your body what to do and when. And then your immune system is like your body's law enforcement. And a biotoxin is like a bomb that has infiltrated your body. So in a normal immune response, when the biotoxin enters your body, your immune system launches a general alarm. They're like, something's going on. We need to check this out. And it alerts the first responders. And that is your innate immune system. Then your genes, and again, this is if you have a normal immune response, your genes go, hey, we need to deploy these special forces being the antibodies. And the antibodies are what can actually remove that biotoxin from your body. So the special forces go in, remove the biotoxin, you're good to go. If you have SIRS genes, and I like to think of this as like, your normal immune response is like you bought a Breville espresso machine, and it costs you like, $400. And so the instruction manual comes in like 14 different languages. It's very verbose. You can figure out how to go to the moon with that machine, given those instruction set. But the SIRS immune response is more like Ikea instructions, where <laughs> there's no words and it's just little guys doing things. And it's not very descriptive at all. With the SIRS immune response, the biotoxin enters your body and those, those uh, general first responders are released. That's your innate immune system. But your genes, because you have that genetic predisposition for SIRS, it doesn't have the specific instructions to eliminate the biotoxin. It can't deploy those special forces. It doesn't, it doesn't have that ability to hand off to your adaptive immune system and create those antibodies and remove the biotoxin. So what happens is the general first responders are just running around causing havoc because they don't actually know how to remove the biotoxin from your body. And that is what actually causes the inflammation that is the, you know, chronic inflammatory response syndrome. That is the inflammatory part. It's that innate immune, res uh, innate immune response. Beautifully said. See, that's the thing. I might say it succinctly, but I prefer consuming content like you just produced, JC. So thank you for that. I love all the info. Best of both worlds. Yeah. So we can also look at this. Uh, in another way, which would be the impact on your overall body. So this is the biotoxin pathway, and you can look up biotoxin pathway shoemaker to see his uh, representation of the biotoxin pathway. But essentially, it's showing the two different paths that can happen. Over here on the left is if a biotoxin enters your body, they while they're in your body, they impair nerve cell function. But if you have non-SERS genes, it's removed by the body and your normal immune response takes over. You don't get the chronic inflammation. And then here in the center, you can see what happens when you have SERS genes, which is all of these things. And I'm going to encourage you guys to take a screenshot of this if you are watching it. 
take some time to familiarize yourself with all of the different ways that the SIRS immune response might impact you because this really is the cause of all the symptoms we see with SIRS. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Um, and just to throw out a few for those of you listening, sleep disturbance, chronic pain, stress uh, is uh, dysregulated, diuretic hormone, which is whether you pee or not, uh, or hold on, I, when you hold on to water or you pee, I should say, your sex hormones are off, immune system is messed up, GI issues, staph infections, inflammation. That's not even all of it. I just wanted to say a few of the words here so you kind of get an idea, even if you aren't watching. Uh, what all can be involved in the disease process of SIRS. And this is just the innate immune impact. There's also the downstream effect of all of that chronic inflammation, which can trigger things like autoimmune disease and hypometabolism and uh, uh, thyroid dysregulation. So it's it's kind of crazy how much this chronic inflammation can impact your overall health. So that kind of leads us to, okay, so I can understand all of those systems become dysregulated with SIRS. And we do think of SIRS as a multi-system, multi-symptom illness, meaning it impacts a lot of different areas of, of your body in a lot of different ways. And this uh, the graphic here, which if you're listening, you can look up the symptom clusters associated with SIRS. There are 37 symptoms that are statistically significant when they're put into these different symptom clusters to SIRS. So if you have um, a symptom in a box, that, that box or cluster would count towards your overall cluster count. And if you have eight of the 13 clusters, it's like a 98.5% chance you have the SIRS genes and you have SIRS. So these are the symptoms that are statistically significant in that way. But there are other symptoms that SIRS patients can and will have. Yeah. And some of them are more common than others. Again, just to throw a few words out there for anyone listening and not watching. Fatigue is alone in its own box. Hard to concentrate is as well. Those are really, really common amongst SIRS patients. Um, there's There are things related to uh, like headaches, and, and just in general, body pain, there's GI issues, uh, joint pain and stiffness, congestion, sinus issues. There's all, like it's just covering, just like you would uh, you would guess from the biotoxin pathway we just talked about, so many systems are affected and therefore so many different symptoms can come out of that. So this, uh, I hope, is a good illustration of exactly how much your body or how many parts of your body can get affected by the disease process of SIRS. But yeah, that's, uh, it's a lot. I think it's really important to go through these. And if you have, let's say four or five of these boxes, that is kind of abnormal in and of itself. And you may want to rethink some of the ones that you've said that you don't have just to see if maybe you are experiencing a version of it. A lot of, uh, a lot of times, the idea of having vertigo sounds very dramatic and very few people might say that they're experiencing vertigo, vertigo, but if you, you know, get out of an elevator and the room spins a little bit, you know, that's, that is vertigo and you may just experience it for just a slight moment, but that is abnormal. And in the context of having several other symptoms here, I would count that. So that's kind of how you want to look at this list um, when you're determining whether or not you think you have SIRS. So that's what SIRS is. But I think the next natural question is like, okay, I have eight of the 13 symptom clusters. What do I do? And we have a lot of episodes about the, the protocol itself, the Shoemaker protocol, which is the only clinically proven path to healing from SIRS. I think we also have a diagnosis episode. So once you establish you have eight of the 13 symptom clusters, then you do what's called the VCS test. It's a vision test to measure your ability to see blurred lines. And then you would get the blood work and start working with a SIRS provider. We'll be sure to put some of those helpful past episodes in the description box below if you would like to think about next steps. And if you're looking for more resources and support in the meantime, you can always join us over at the SIRSgroup.com. We'll see you there.